Now it's time to go one step further, advancing American superiority in space. ULA is unleashing the energy of American ingenuity with the development of the Vulcan Centaur, a rocket purpose-built to meet all of the requirements of our national security space launch needs. Unveiled in 2015, ULA has been working on Vulcan Centaur since at least 2014. After many years of delays, all the parts of the United Launch Alliance's next-generation Vulcan Centaur rocket are finally about to converge on Florida for their first launch. Why the success of the first Vulcan orbital flight is a big deal for NASA and Blue Origin? Well, we'll find out about that in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Following Russia's first illegal invasion of the Ukraine, countries around the world attempted to punish the aggressor, mainly through economic sanctions. In the U.S., those sanctions included bans on the import of most Russian aerospace technology, including the RD-180 engine that still powers ULA's Atlas V workhorse rocket in 2023. In 2014, ULA announced it would work with Blue Origin to integrate the startup's BE-4 engine into a new rocket booster to end its reliance on Russian engines. Unfortunately, the BE-4 has proved to be one of the main stumbling blocks on Vulcan Centaur's journey to flight readiness, which was originally expected in 2020. One reason the BE-4's development is progressing slower than planned is that it's a hugely ambitious piece of engineering. More than eight years later, that BE-4 engine is finally ready for flight, and the rest of the first two-stage Vulcan rocket appears to be right behind it. More powerful than the space shuttle's main engine, it's designed to be fueled by methane, which is a brand new fuel in the context of space launch systems. Several companies, prominently SpaceX as well as Blue Origin, are developing launchers around it. But the fact remains that, to date, no methane fuel rocket has made it into space. Nevertheless, it's hoped that Vulcan Centaur will change that this year. In a burst of New Year activity, CEO Tori Bruno confirmed that Vulcan Flight 1's core stage has been fully assembled, buttoned up, and loaded onto ULA's transport ship. The aptly named rocket ship will ferry the booster from ULA's Decatur, Alabama factory to Cape Canaveral, Florida, where it will enter the final stages of launch preparation at the company's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station LC-41 pad. Simultaneously, ULA has finished proof testing Vulcan's first Centaur 5 upper stage, a larger and more advanced version of the Centaur 3 stage ULA, and its predecessors have been flying for decades. Centaur 5 is almost twice as wide as Centaur 3, and it's designed to hold two and a half times more propellant, enabling significantly higher performance in some scenarios. Additionally, while ULA has partially abandoned plans for a reusable upper stage called ACES, Advanced Cryogenic Evolve Stage, some of those improvements may still be added to Centaur 5. Compared to Centaur 3, Centaur 5's longevity in space will grow from 8 to 12 hours. ULA is also developing a mission extension kit that would allow it to operate for multiple months, unprecedented for a rocket stage powered by a cryogenic propellant. Photos taken by a local paper appear to indicate that ULA is shipping one or more payload fairing halves alongside Vulcan's first flight-worthy booster. While unconfirmed, it would make sense for ULA to ship Vulcan's booster and fairing together. Another tweet from Tori Bruno indicates that ULA intends to ship Vulcan's booster and upper stage together, increasing the odds that all components will be aboard rocket ship when it departs for Florida. Vulcan Centaur is ultimately designed to fully replace ULA's existing Delta IV and Atlas V rockets. Building and operating two very different rockets simultaneously is undoubtedly one of the reasons that ULA's launch costs are so much higher than SpaceX's, and simplifying to a single production line is one clear way to achieve a major cost saving. ULA hopes that the simplest version of Vulcan will eventually cost about $100 million per launch, still far more than SpaceX's base Falcon 9 price, but potentially more competitive than Atlas V. It's unclear, though, as Bruno has previously stated that Atlas V launch costs have fallen to about $100 million apiece thanks to unrelated cost savings. Regardless, Vulcan Centaur will be a capable rocket, and its price is close enough to SpaceX's extremely competitive Falcon 9 for it to be a mostly valid option for launch customers who want diversity or who want to avoid SpaceX for less rational reason. Vulcan has secured more than 70 launch contracts thanks to ULA's intimate relationship with the U.S. military and Amazon's reluctance to launch its Project Cooper Internet satellites within the company behind Starlink, a direct competitor. 
Fitted with two BE-4 engines, six solid rocket boosters, and unknown upgrades, ULA says the most capable version of Vulcan Centaur will be available to launch up to 12.1 tons to the moon, 15.3 tons to geostationary transfer orbit, and 27.2 tons to low Earth orbit. To high orbits, the most capable Vulcan variant will be fairly competitive with SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket. To low orbit, it'll generally match or slightly exceed the performance of an expendable Falcon 9, but likely for a much higher price. By every measure, the simple and cheapest Vulcan variant is significantly less capable than even a partially reusable Falcon 9 and will likely cost 50 to 100 percent more. One of Vulcan Centaur's biggest users will, of course, be the American space agency, NASA. In early 2021, NASA added the Vulcan Centaur to the Launch Services 2 contract. This makes Vulcan Centaur part of the Launch Services program and subjects it to the on-ramp provision in NLS-2. The on-ramp provisions allow existing launch providers to introduce new vehicles that NASA has not yet provided for. Besides another important customer, albeit one that keeps a lower profile, is the U.S. Space Force, USSF. Established at the end of 2019, it's a separate branch of the U.S. Armed Forces alongside the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps. Prompted by the recognition that space, particularly in the form of surveillance and communications, has become indispensable to modern military operation, it's the role of the USSF to protect American interests in the space domain. Where in the past, military space launches were the province of the U.S. Air Force, they now fall within the remit of the USSF. As an example, in July 2022, a ULA Atlas V rocket launched a pair of spacecraft, a missile tracking satellite, and a technology demonstrator platform on behalf of USSF. Indicating ULA's confidence in the unflown rocket, the main target of Vulcan's first launch is the moon. Vulcan Flight 1 will carry two main payloads, the first two Amazon Kuiper satellite prototypes and Pittsburgh startup Astrobotics' first Peregrine moon lander. After deploying both Kuiper satellites in low Earth orbit, Centaur 5 will fire up again and attempt to send the 1.3-ton Peregrine lander directly to the moon, also known as a translunar injection burn. Developed as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, Peregrine will be tasked with entering orbit around the moon and eventually landing up to 70 to 90 kilograms of payload on the lunar surface. The first Peregrine moon lander is fully assembled and currently in the middle of extensive integrated testing. If successful, ULA CEO Tori Bruno says that Vulcan will likely be ready to launch sometime in quarter 1, 2023, though quarter 2, 2023 is more likely. After all, we wish all the best for this rocket. That just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality content. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.